Hey, my fourth and fifth grade friends, Mrs. Real here. Today I have a story for you and also an activity for you to do while I'm reading. Um, I know that a lot of you, when I've been in your classes, I know some of the writing activities and things you've been working on. I also know that, um, I know Mrs. Davidson just recently posted the, some of the writing things that she was doing with her class. Um, so the story I have for you today is one of my favorite authors to use to help you develop some of your writing skills. Um, he does an amazing job at using really great vocabulary, lots of juicy describing words. Um, and he's also one of my favorite authors and this book in particular is a good book for me to help you figure out ways to use words other than the word said. So when I was teaching first graders and they were learning to write and they had to write five or six or seven sentences, they always started, I like, I like, I like, I like my mom, I like my dad, I like my dog, I like my cat. Half the time they spelled it like lick, so they were licking their moms and dads and cats, but then they progressed, you guys progressed, from licking things to liking things to being able to have better sentences that had different words other than just, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like. So now that you're getting better at writing and you're starting to do bigger writing projects and working on things like dialogue, sometimes you get stuck in that same kind of rut saying, he said, she said, he said, she said, the dog said, the cat said, everybody just said. And there's nothing wrong with the word said unless you've used it 85 times over and over and over again. So my challenge to you today is as I read this story to you, I want you to have a piece of paper and a pencil or pen next to you and start writing down all of the other ways you can say said without using the word said. I went through the book before I started the video and found over 30 words that were used instead of over 30 times that there were other words used besides said. Some of them were kind of used three or four times, um, still wasn't the word said, kind of like the word asked or answered, because when you're doing questioning, then there's other options that you have. So there was a couple of times it was asked, and a couple of times it was answered, and a couple of times it was a couple other ones. But there's probably 15, easily 15 to 20 different words in here that you could collect in a booklet or on a piece of paper or near your writing activities, so that when you have a writing activity where you need to do some dialogue, you have other options. It's kind of like your own little mini thesaurus. I was working with the third graders this year on thesauruses and dictionaries and one of the things that we tried to do was find all kinds of other ways to say said. So I'm going to do it using this story. So get your pencil and paper ready. I'm going to share the screen with our book. I may have shared it with you before. It's not going to be a big deal if you've heard it before. So The Amazing Bone by William Steig. I love using this book with third, fourth, and fifth graders. It's longer. It's got great, like I said, great dialogue, or great dialogue and great juicy vocabulary. There's a couple of times I'm going to be speaking in a foreign language that I have to read and hopefully pronounce somewhat appropriately. Um, so here we go. The Amazing Bone by William Steig. Amazing Bone by William Steig. It was a brilliant day, and instead of going straight home from school, Pearl dawdled. Vocabulary word. She watched the grown-ups in town at their grown-up work, things she might someday be doing. She saw the street cleaners sweeping the streets, and she looked in at the bakery on Parsnip Lane and saw the bakers taking hot loaves of pumpernickel out of the oven and powdering crullers with sugar dust. On Cobble Road, she stopped at Maltby's barn and stood gawking as the old gaffers pitched their ringing horseshoes and spat tobacco juice. Later, she sat on the ground in the forest between school and home, and spring was so bright and beautiful. The warm air touched her so tenderly, she could almost feel herself changing into a flower. Her light dress felt like petals. I love everything she heard herself say. I kind of feel like that about spring too. It's my favorite season. So do I, the voice answered. Pearl straightened up and looked around. No one was there. 
Where are you? she asked. Look down, came the answer. Pearl looked down. I'm the bone in the violets near the tree by the rock on your right. Pearl stared at the small bone. You talk, she murmured. In any language, said the bone. Habla espanol, sprechen Sie Deutsch. And I can imitate any sound there is. The bone made the sounds of a trumpet calling soldiers to arms. Then it sounded like wind blowing, then like pattering rain. Then it snored, then sneezed. Pearl couldn't believe what she was hearing. You're a bone, she said. How come you can sneeze? I don't know, the bone replied. I didn't make the world. May I take you home with me, wonderful bone? Pearl asked. You certainly may, said the bone. I've been along a long time. I've been alone a long time. A year ago, come August, I fell out of a witch's basket. I could have yelled after her as she walked on, but I didn't want to be her bone any longer. She ate snails cooked in garlic at every meal and was always complaining about her rheumatism and asking nosy questions. I'd be happier with someone young and lively like you. Pearl picked the bone up and gently put it in her purse. She left the purse open so they could continue their talk and started home, forgetting her school books on the grass. She was eager to show this bone to her parents and she could guess what would happen when she did. Her mother, she would tell about the talking bone. Her mother would say, you're only imagining it. Her father would agree. And then the bone would flabbergast them both by talking. The spring green sparkled in the spring light. Tree toads were trilling. It's the kind of wonderful day, said Pearl, when wonderful things happen, like me finding you. Like my finding you, the bone answered, and it began to whistle a walking tune that made the going very pleasant. But not for long. Who should rush out from in back of a boulder and spoil everything but three highway robbers with pistols and daggers? Pearl couldn't tell what breed of animal they were because they wore cloaks and Halloween masks and spoke in chilling, but they were fierce and spoke in chilling voices. Hand over the purse, one commanded. Pearl would have gladly surrendered the purse just to be rid of them, but not with the bone in it. You can't have my purse, she said, surprised at her own boldness. What's in it, said another robber, pointing his gun at Pearl's head. I'm in it, the bone growled, and it began to hiss like a snake and roar like a lion. Robbers didn't wait around to hear the rest, in case there was any more. They fled so fast you couldn't tell which way they'd gone. It made Pearl laugh. The bone, too. They continued on their way, joking about what had just happened and chatting about this and that. But it wasn't long before a fox stepped forth from behind a tree and barred their path wore a sprig of lilac in his lapel. He carried a cane, and he was grinning so the whole world could see his sharp, white teeth. Hold everything, he said. Pearl froze. You're exactly what I've been longing for, he went on. Young, plump, and tender. You will be my main course at dinner tonight, and he seized Pearl in a tight embrace. Unhand her, you villain, the bone screamed, or I'll bite your ears off. Who is that speaking? asked the surprised fox. A ravenous crocodile who dotes on fresh fox chops. That's who, answered the bone. The wily fox was not as easily duped as the robbers. He saw no dangerous crocodile. He peered into Pearl's purse where the sounds seemed to be coming from and pulled out the bone. As I live and flourish, he exclaimed, a talking bone. I've always wanted to own something of this sort and he put the bone in his pocket where it roared and ranted to no avail. Pushing Pearl along, the fox set out for his hideaway. Pearl's sobs were so pitiful, the fox couldn't help feeling a little sorry for her, but he was determined she would be his dinner. Please, Mr. Fox, Pearl whimpered, may I have my bone back, at least until I have to die. Oh, all right, said the fox, disgusted with himself for being so soft-hearted and he handed her the bone, which she put back in her purse. You must let this beautiful young creature go on living, the bone yelled. Have you no shame, sir? The fox laughed. Why should I be ashamed? I can't help being the way I am. I didn't make the world. The bone commenced to revile the fox. You coward, it sneered. You worm, you odoriferous wretch. 
These expletives were annoying. Shut up or I'll eat you, the fox snarled. It would be amusing to gnaw on a bone that talks and screams with pain. The bone kept quiet the rest of the way, and so did Pearl. When they arrived at the fox's hideaway, he shoved Pearl with her bone into an empty room and locked the door. Pearl sat on the floor and stared at the walls. I know how you feel, the bone whispered. I'm only just beginning to live, Pearl whispered back. I don't want it to end. I know, said the bone. Isn't there something we can do, Pearl asked. I wish I could think of something, said the bone, but I can't. I feel miserable. What's that? Pearl asked. She'd heard some sounds from the kitchen. He's sharpening a knife, the bone whispered. <laughs> oh my goodness, Pearl sobbed, and what's that? Sounds like wood being put into a stove, answered the bone. I hope it won't all take too long, said Pearl. She could smell vinegar and oil. The fox was preparing a salad to go with his meal. Pearl hugged the bone to her. Bone, say something to comfort me. You are very dear to me, said the bone. Oh, how dear you are to me, Pearl replied. She could hear a key in the lock and was unable to get another word out of her throat or turn her eyes toward the door. Be brave, the bone whispered. Pearl could only tremble. She was dragged into the kitchen where she could see flames in the open stove. I regret having to do this to you, sighed the fox. It's nothing personal. Yabam, said the bone suddenly without knowing why he said it. What was that, said the fox, standing stock still. Yabam a bibble, the bone intoned. Jabracken a bibble de gray. And something quite unexpected took place. The fox grew several inches shorter. Alabam Chinook be Baba Caboozle, the bone continued. And miraculously, the fox was the size of a rabbit. No one could believe what was happening. Not Pearl, not the fox, not even the bone whose words were making it happen. A dunas just gulak kabok and yabat, it went on. The fox, clothes and all, was now the size of a mouse. Scraboon it, the bone ordered and the mouse, that is the minuscule fox, scurried away and into a hole. I didn't know you could do magic, Pearl breathlessly exclaimed. Neither did I, said the bone. Well, what made you say those words? I wish I knew, the bone said. They just came to me. I had to say them. I must have picked them up somehow, hanging around with that witch. You are an amazing bone, said Pearl, and this is a day I won't ever forget. It was dark when they reached Pearl's house. The moment the door swung open, she was in her mother's arms, and right after that, in her father's. Where on earth have you been? They both wanted to know. We were frazzled with worry. Pearl didn't know what to say first. She held up the bone. This bone, she said, can talk. And just as she had expected, her mother said, a talking bone? My pearl, it's only your imagination. And her father said something similar. And also, as Pearl had expected, the bone astonished them both by remarking, you have an exceptional daughter. Before her parents had a chance to get over their shock, Pearl began telling the story of her day's adventure, and the bone helped out. It was all too much for, parent, for Pearl's parents, until they got used to it. The bone stayed on and became part of the family. It was given an honored place in a silver tray on the mantelpiece. Pearl always took it to bed when she retired, and the two chatterboxes whispered together until late in the night. Sometimes the bone put Pearl to sleep by singing or by imitating soft harp music. Anyone who happened to be alone in the house always had the bone to converse with, and they all had music whenever they wanted it, and sometimes even when they didn't. The end. All right, so how did you do? How many words are on your list of different ways to say said without saying using the word said? I'm hoping 
that among them you found whispered. I already gave you asked and answered. Here's when the robbers one commanded. When she first met the bone, she said, you talk, she murmured. Murmured is a really quiet, soft way of doing it. Unhand her, you villain, the bone screamed. Please, Mr. Fox, Pearl whimpered. The fox snarled. The fox laughed. The bone yelled. All kinds of different ways of saying things without using the word said. There was also a lot of great vocabulary words in there, gawked, and there was, on the very first page there were two that I kind of whispered at you. She dawdled. If she's walking around slowly watching things, she's dawdling. And she stood gawking. Meaning she was just kind of like, what are you doing? Old people spitting tobacco and playing horseshoes. So I'm hoping if you want, watch the video again. Watch it a couple of times. Go through the words. Make a different list of awesome, interesting, juicy describing words. Along with your list of the words for said. And hopefully this will help you as you keep working on your writing. And now working in some writing of dialogue as well. So. I will see you again soon, my friends. Bye.